Hey, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. This is my top 10 stocks as we head into Tuesday, June 25th. This will be a technical analysis breakdown. So if you're someone that uses charts within your trading, or maybe you're just interested in learning more about charts and how they can be used as a tool to help make good decisions as a trader, this will be a video for you. Also, if you trade Bitcoin, I will do a bonus analysis at the end. A couple things. First off, if you would like to see a chart that I don't do, feel free to request that down in the comment section. And second, the candlestick that you see right there is still changing and moving around. That is because the market's open for a small amount of time. But I like to do these uh, videos when the market is still open because sometimes we can capture some really interesting late day price movement. And then finally, I'll be using the 30 minute time frame, meaning each one of these candlesticks here represent 30 minutes worth of time. So stock number one, MLGO, and what a monster, monster move this one went on today. Huge volume, great price movement. Uh, so you gotta think a lot of people are watching this one moving forward. And in terms of areas of support, let's start there. So if you like to play more so pullbacks, let me change that to green to represent support. But initial level and the level that I would call this the ideal level, we say, Clay, what would make this chart look the absolute healthiest and strongest moving forward? That would be if the price can stay above 1150. Now, with that being said, if the price falls below 1150, that doesn't mean the entire chart's destroyed or ruined or anything like that. But if the price can stay above it, that would be a great sign of power. The much more important level is going to be this purple line down here. The 50 period moving average keyword definitely being moving because I get it completely irrelevant right now. Price is way up here. This line's way down here. But as time goes by, that line is going to move itself higher and higher and essentially become a trend line that draws itself for you. So from the overarching point of view in terms of the health of the trend, as long as the price is above that quote unquote trend line, then the overall trend is still in the bull's favor. Now, in terms of areas of resistance, I have to squeeze this one quite down quite a bit. So it's hard to see, but a good problem to have. Uh, when you have to go back this far into the charts history. But next key level of resistance is going to be from this high from back here in early June. And that sits right up there at the $15 mark. So $15 mark, like I said, coming from many, many weeks ago will be the next main battleground from the resistance side of things. But anyway, look at it. Great movement, great price action. Let's see if this eventful action carries into Tuesday. Next one, AGFY, penny stock here that had a very, very strong start. And then, you know, did pull back. So to think some poor souls bought right there and then has pulled back. So hopefully those people were using a stop loss. But what makes this interesting is, you know, it is still overall bullish in the sense of it was a big gap up. And right now you could still just classify this as a pullback. And if you like to try to play and catch those turnarounds, then I think there's an interesting turnaround point right here at about the 54 cent mark where you can see that this was very clearly a top of area of resistance. Once the price fell below it, rejected, rejected, rejected. So if the price can get up here and do battle with it, that accomplishes the first a couple things. First off, if the price does get up there, that would imply that the downwards pressure has stopped. So that, that in and of itself, again, doesn't guarantee anything, but it makes it more valid to think, okay, maybe this pullback is finally over. Second, if the price can push up through there, then that just single, uh, you know, signals that there's that much more strength that's showing because not only has the price stopped going down, not only has the price recovered back up to that area of resistance, but if the price is pushing up through there, like I said, that would just be a, a additional piece of evidence that maybe just maybe the bulls are returning and getting ready to make a push back upwards. Again, nothing is guaranteed, but that is, you know, you're, it's almost like you're in a court of law and you're building the case with evidence and that case in that situation makes it plausible uh, that what you're thinking, what your game plan is, uh, does make sense. So keep an eye on 54 cent mark moving forward and we'll see what happens with it. Next one, NVD, another big mover here and almost a case of deja vu from uh, you know what I talked about in the video from Friday. So what I'm gonna do is just uh, move this red line up. Let's see how does it match. Uh, honestly, no, doesn't match nearly as good as what I thought it would. So yeah, I don't even know why I thought it would match at all. Wow, that's embarrassing. Anyways. Regardless, moving forward, I'll just get rid of that and let's just put in a flat line up there. Key area of resistance and nothing fancy behind this is up at 243. I uh, you know just a question of where do the party stop today? And you can see it stopped up there at three separate occasions, both there, there, and there. Doesn't mean that the price can't push through it. I'm just saying that, you know, given the, the price record here, uh, it, it's telling us where the sellers are currently at and hanging out. And that is indeed at $2.43. So keep a close eye on that. In terms of areas of support, going back, back to that idea of ideal levels, what would make this chart look the strongest? That would certainly be if the price can stay above that pink line there. 200 period moving average right now valued at 229. But again, from the overarching standpoint, as long as the price stays above that purple line, as the line itself moves higher and higher, then the bulls are in full health. So as far as the overall chart, though, is concerned, very good movement today to think that not that long ago, this thing was all the way down here. Now it's all the way up here. We'll see if this trend carries into Tuesday. Next one, DNA. And overall, very brutal move on this one today. 
started strong, shot all the way up here. Again, some poor souls bought right there, some poor souls bought right there. So hopefully those people are using stop losses and down it's gone. But what I find interesting here is yes, absolutely beat down, but now you do have a little bit of upwards movement. Now you gotta be careful because in all actuality, this essentially formed a bear flag pattern, but just because something's bearish doesn't mean for sure or guaranteed it's gonna go down. But this goes back to the idea of it at least becomes plausible to suggest that maybe just maybe the selling's done, maybe just maybe the bulls have shown back up because again, there is some upwards movement in the bull instruction. And it's really just a question of monitoring this. That's what a watch is all about. Finding unique, finding interesting situations, and not rushing out and randomly buying stuff, but at least watching it. So if you like penny stocks, if you like these situations where something has been absolutely beat down, but it is starting to show some strength and it you know makes sense to throw out the question, okay, maybe there's uh, some return of bullishness here. If you like these sets of circumstances, definitely keep an eye on it. Next one, NVDA, and another day of pullback here. And this is where it's all about perspective. Because, yeah, if you're some sort of day trader, flipper, shorter-term swing trader, and you were buying there or buying there, uh, then, yeah, this thing has continued to pull back. With that being said, a little build up more context, and you probably already know this. Big picture-wise, NVIDIA still very, very much so in an uptrend. Yes, no doubt about it. This is a very deep and uh, a pretty uh, rough pullback. And the reason why I'm saying it's a rough pullback as opposed to just a normal pullback is notice all these other pullbacks never violated that pink line there, the 200 period moving average. But as I zoom back in here, you'll notice that the price is now broken down below that level. So that's where I would not call this just a normal healthy pullback. This has become a rough pullback and things seem to be starting to fall uh, you know, out of out of the bull's hand and in the bear's hands a little bit. So let me get rid of that level. In the very near term, initial key level of resistance going to be right there. That pink line, 200 period moving average, just based on the foundational rule that when levels of support are broken and closed below, they tend to act as resistance, which is what happened uh, right there. And then as far as supports, no need to overcomplicate it. Just ask the question, where did the bleeding finally stop today? And you can see it stopped on several occasions right down there at 118.30. I mean, check it out, bounce bounce, bounce, even this last 30 minutes, bounce. So 118.30, as of now, has buyers hanging around down there. Will they continue to hang around there over the next couple of days? We'll see what happens. Real quick, want to take a break and personally invite you to get signed up for this free live online webinar that I'm offering later on in the week. So if you've been enjoying what you've seen and you want to learn more about this tool, how it can and should be used to build consistency and manage risk, then definitely get signed up for the free live class. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link down in the description box you can use. Or if you're watching at my website, there's an area right there on the webpage you can use to sign up. So like I said, if you've been enjoying, then definitely get signed up for the free class. Next one, TSLA Tesla, and overall started the day so nicely. Gap up, opening 30-minute candle, big green candle. Problem is, next green candle totally gave back their gains, fell back below that red line, and you can see that red line went right back to acting as resistance as it did back here. So, um, you know, for temporarily, yeah, 185.30 had been uh, broken, uh, but amazing that the price fell back below it and then immediately went back to acting as resistance. So more of the story there, 185.30 remains that key area of resistance in the near term. As far as levels of support are concerned, ideally speaking, you want to see the price stay above this purple line. It's been doing its best to hold above there, and so far it is. Uh, but if it doesn't, uh, then a much more important level, I would say, is down here at that pink line, the 200 period moving average right now valued at 179. But yeah, overall, I would definitely say today was disappointing day for Tesla, given how strong it started. Next one, FFIE, and the bloodshed on this one continues. Uh, just dropped the new loads that have not been seen for a while. But it is somewhat of a cult stock, and cult stocks are always interesting because when they get beat down by quite a bit, there, there can be an opportunity for some really solid dead cat bounces where even if it is just a dead cat bounce or in other words, a fake bounce from a trading standpoint, there can still be some potentially good uh, you know, uh, opportunity. And that's what we have here. We have, like I said, an absolute beat down, but check it out. Last 30 minutes here, good solid green candle, nice volume. So it makes sense to throw out the question, is this the start of an even bigger dead cat bounce? Now, to be fair, maybe it's not. Maybe this thing rolls right back over. But to be fair, that is a two-sided coin. Maybe it is, and maybe this thing's getting ready to rock and roll and keep bouncing. So it's really as straightforward as that. Uh, basically, a cult stock, that's a penny stock that was absolutely beat down, now starting to show some signs of strength. Is this the start of a bigger bounce? Keep an eye on it. 
Next one, NXL, talked about this one on Friday and go ahead and get rid of that level, some house cleaning. And then first update, just based on the rule that when levels of resistance are broken and closed above, you wanna see them act as support. So we talked about that as an area of resistance and with the price above it, you would wanna see it act as support. I mean, you just can't make this stuff up. Check it out right there, found some support. And then even during this last 30 minutes, which is, you know, I gotta admit, a, a pretty nasty final 30 minutes here. But even with all that so far, the price has bounced off that level. Market closes in about six minutes. So uh, yeah, it's looking like it, it's got a good chance to stay above there. But nonetheless, ideally speaking, yes, this is the level that you wanna see the price continue to hold above. But if it doesn't hold above there, then I know broken record time, I've talked about it, but big picture wise, just watch that purple line. And as that line works itself higher and higher, that's what you wanna see, assuming you care about the bigger picture point of view. In terms of areas of resistance, this situation, I think we're gonna draw a, a pretty, yeah, look at that tread line right there. So keep an eye on that resistance tread line right there. What, one interesting part is, theoretically, the price could never ever break that tread line, but it could still keep trending upwards because notice that does have an upward slope to it. So it, that's not a necessity to break above that line to keep the uptrend going, uh, but it does seem to have served so far as a good uh, area where the, the sellers have decided to hang out. But like I said, last 30 minutes here, very rough, but everything, all things considered, the thing's put in higher highs and higher lows, and that's by far what matters most. Next one, AMD. Not really a whole lot to talk about other than just a reiteration of the level that I talked about previously on this one. And that is this red line here at 163.10. You look at today's price movement and the power of charts. I mean, and if you don't believe me that I've had that line in there, I'm not offended. Uh, just go back and watch previous videos and you'll see I've had that line in there. I don't say that to brag about myself. I do say it to brag about charts and also to serve as a plug, I suppose, to go get signed up for that free webinar. But right there, went back to acting as resistance. So more of the story, 163.10 remains very, very key level that you gotta think a lot of people are watching. And then you also have a bit of a, a wedge dynamic here when you consider that there is this nice little uptrending line here. So uh, is this a, a little miniature ascending triangle here that's gonna get ready to break up through 163.10? I think if you like this price range or if you play options, certainly an interesting pattern to keep an eye on. Next, TQQQ, and this one uh, is continuing to pull back here. Starting to look pretty rough, but not as rough as uh, NVIDIA, because remember, NVIDIA had broken down below its 200 period moving average. This one is still above it. So yeah, things are looking pretty rough, but I would not call this a rough pullback per se. Just they're looking rough, but I'm not gonna call it rough. It's just seemingly rough. Uh, but anyways, let's get some things updated here, get rid of that level and that level. And the first update just comes about on that rule. Like I said, when levels of support are broken and closed below, they tend to act as resistance. So in the very near term, if there is any sort of attempted stabilization and then turning back upwards, 72, 75 is gonna be that first key battleground uh, that'll need to be broken. So keep an eye on that. And then more so, I, th I think the more pressing, because look at this last 30 minutes, this thing is continuing to sink. More pressing thing is areas of support. And as I already started off the video, uh, this is an area now that seems to be within striking distance. And that's also a level uh, that, that really does need to hold because if it doesn't, that's where this thing looking rough turns into, yeah, this is a flat out rough pullback now. So definitely keep an eye on 7025. Granted, that line will be moving and changing because that is a moving average. But yeah, that'll definitely be very important. Looking like it could come into play on Tuesday. For you Bitcoin traders, I'll talk about that in just a second. But for you stock traders, again, if you like what you saw here and you want to learn more about the tool, how it can and should be used, go get signed up for that free webinar. It'll be later this week, Thursday, June 27th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And it is a true live event. So bring your questions and answers or bring your questions and I'd be happy to offer you uh, answers live and we can talk about whatever you have. One quick clarification here, we are now looking at the four hour time frame, meaning each one of these candlesticks here represents four hours worth of time. And I like to do that because Bitcoin is open 24 seven. So that'll keep this uh, analysis relevant for as long as possible. But yeah, needless to say, Bitcoin has had a very rough, basically past 24 hours as this thing has gone straight down. And actually, as I speak right now, I mean, look at this most recent candle, it is at lows and pushing even lower. So some house cleaning there, let's just get rid of that and make this update here, 62,200 when levels of support are broken, tend to act as resistance. So let's just assume you're watching this video 15, 20 hours after I upload it. Question number one you need to ask yourself is, where is the price at relative to 60,200? If you're answering the question that the price is up above that level, that is a good thing. And even if it's just slightly above it, it's a good thing because that would at least imply that this current downwards movement has stopped enough to go sideways and then work itself a little bit back upwards. So any sort of answering the question that the price is above 60,200, that, that is a good sign. That is a step in the right direction. Now, if you're saying, well, Clay, actually the price is still down below 60,200. Well, that's where we gotta go figure out, oh, just get rid of that line too. It served its purpose. 
And as you're seeing here, hard to see, but this just goes to show that Bitcoin has not been down this far for a very long time. In fact, let's just go to the daily time frame real quick, make this a little easier. And go right here, 57,200, change that to green. And we'll go back to the, the four hour time frame now. So that line right there, whoops, where'd it go? There we go. It is definitely a situation where if you're answering the question that the price is down below 57,200, then that's telling you that not only is are the bull, are bears uh, still in charge, they've gotten that much stronger and things have gotten that much more ugly. Now, if you're saying, well, Clay, the price is down below there, but still above there. I mean, that's not a great thing, but at least I would suggest at least some sort of consolidation is taking place. But, uh, it, you know, keep your eye on those levels. Walk yourself through those questions. That'll keep the current status of things as relevant as possible. But yeah, no doubt about it. As I speak right now, uh, a whole lot of downwards pressure. And as I invited the stock traders, I'm inviting you as a Bitcoin and crypto trader, definitely get signed up for this class because what you learn about can and should be used within the world of crypto and Bitcoin. So go get signed up. It'll be later this week, Thursday, June 27th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So I hope to see you there. As far as these top 10 videos are concerned, if you enjoy these, do a couple things, hit that like button, leave a comment below. Like I said, give me a request if you'd like for me to do analysis on another chart, and I'd be happy to try my best to do that. So hit that like button, leave a comment below, go get signed up for that free webinar. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.